64 lets you play hundreds more games than any video machine, plus draw, program, even do music. I'm more alive than ever before, and my friends are knocking down my door. Cause now we're into so much more. We're into our Commodore 64. Why buy just a video game from Atari or Intellivision? Invest in the wonder computer of the 1980s for under $300. The Commodore VIC-20. Unlike games, it has a real computer keyboard. With the Commodore VIC-20, the whole family can learn computing at home. Plays great games, too. <laughs> Under $300, the wonder computer of the 1980s, the Commodore VIC-20. Coming soon, Commodore brings you Gorf, the Wonder Arcade game, and Omega Race in home versions. Commodore. Why buy just a video game from Atari or Intellivision? Invest in the wonder computer of the 1980s for under $300. The Commodore VIC-20. Unlike games, it has a real computer keyboard. With the Commodore VIC-20, the whole family can learn computing at home. Plays great games, too. <laughs> under $300, the wonder computer of the 1980s. The Commodore VIC-20. Coming soon, Commodore brings you Gorf, the wonder arcade game, and Omega Race in home versions. Commodore. And guess what? Sapphire's a man of such a show. Scratch, scratch, just blabs about his band, you smell? What an idiot. So guess what? I made this picture of me with the band. A man will spit blood badly when she sees his fair income. Then I'm gonna put myself in their video. So is it, because guess what? My Commodore Omega is so excellent. And Amanda's such a bogan because she won't know how much. So good. See ya. cellular phone system. Just $7.99 when you sign up with Radio Shack's authorized cellular phone carrier. Go where you want to go. There's nothing else to buy, and it's ready to go wherever you go. Call when you want to call. Use in your car, or go portable and take it along. Radio Shack's complete transportable cellular phone system. Just $7.99 only at Radio Shack, the technology store.
food at the speed of light. From Worlds of Wonder Stadium, not included. were to give you the gift of knowledge, no matter how many gifts it took. Today, you have a big advantage with the Apple II GS. Apple II computers are found in more schools than any other computer. Your parents gave you the world. You can give your kids the universe. The Commodore VIC-20. Welcome to the age of the computer. As you grow with Vic, Vic grows with you. The Vic 20, only 359, includes bonus pack and data cassette. Games Unlimited, 378 Portage Avenue. Your official Commodore computer dealer. Commodore Vic 20, the one to grow on. To match the higher intelligence of the new Commodore 128, an Apple IIc would have to add three more IIcs to expand to 512K. An extra keypad, 30 block graphic sets, color sprites, two more voices, four instruments, a cartridge port, a joystick port, and a Commodore 64. Commodore 128 personal computer, a higher intelligence at a lower price. Shack TRS-80 put the world of color computing into your home. Instant loading program packs turn any color TV into an exciting game arcade. Wow. And there's more. The color computer is an educational aid, a home management tool, and up-to-the-minute electronic information service. The programmable, expandable TRS-80 color computer from $399 only at Radio Shack, the biggest name in little computers. Shack understands that a computer purchase is a serious personal and business decision. But what's really important is the company behind the computer. At Radio Shack, when you buy a computer, you buy a company. A company committed to technology, service, and support. We'll be here when you need us with a telephone hotline, training, education, and excellent service. Tandy Computers, in business, for business. Tandy, clearly superior. This is Apple's Macintosh. And this is Alright of them. Developed for Macintosh. I should probably uh, jump on into the stream here. Let's see. Make sure everything's working. Looks like it is. Yeah, like everything's running, looks like the stream's going, looks like my cameras are all going. Cool. So yeah, I don't have any big plans for today's stream that are exciting except to um, start working on this board. I'm just going to start soldering, get the music playing, and um, hopefully a... Uh, Hummingbird that's flying around my workshop finds his way out of here. I've got no windows up top for the hummingbird to get out, so they're 
unfortunately. So we'll see how that goes. It's going to be an action-packed stream with all that considered. Um, Alright. I'm also still kind of testing out the arrangement of the workbench here and all the equipment. And I think I'm going to putz around with things while I go. But anyways, still shaking out the bugs of this whole thing, but I uh, figured I'd try streaming anyways. Let's see how it goes. Um, I guess the first thing I'm doing here is, I don't even know if this is a good perspective on this board, but I got a lot of pin headers to solder down. So I'd like to get started on those. Yeah, you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm also tempted to see if I could do some kind of like time lapse of this whole process at some point. It'll take some interesting editing to do it to see if I can get a good view out of my uh, Twitch layout here. Hummingbird just keeps kind of flying back and forth on the roof of my workshop. Chirping. They sound like little laser beams. I'm like, come on, little guy, just fly out the door. I guess I could leave the workshop altogether, but I don't want to leave all the doors open while I'm not here. Got kind of a catch-22 going on, I guess. I'm here, and I might be frightening the bird. But if I leave... Then I'm not frightening off folks that want to wander into my workshop, I guess. Or whatever that's for. I'm not a very frightening guy. Is that the best angle I can get on this thing? I think it's a better view than, like, the overhead. Hmm. Yeah, still kind of playing around with all this. I guess the thing I could show before I go too much further is, um... I, yeah, so this is the thing I'm trying to build immediately here. Is this, uh, 512K ROM, 512K RAM module. Or, uh, the RC2014. So I'll just keep going with that and see what happens. Oops, that is not what I wanted to do. Yeah, I was kind of trying to get a good angle on this, such that, you know, I've got a good angle while I'm working on it, and then maybe you can get a good angle viewing what I'm doing. Otherwise, what's the point of streaming all of it? Since that's kind of a good angle. We'll see. And that's all I'm doing here is I'm just soldering these pins. All these pin headers, or all these uh, chip sockets. Yeah, my hand's getting in the way of that, isn't it? Okay. That's a slightly better angle. I'd at least be able to see a few things I'm doing here. I 
Eh, you can see what's going on. That's better, I think. Tell the soldering is going a bit faster now that I picked a slightly beefier tip. I was using a really small tip before because I was afraid of uh, the tight spaces in here, but this beefier tip I think is working a lot faster. It's nice that this is all like through hole stuff. Yeah, I am noticing I'm like hitting some adjacent pins with the heat, but that's okay. But I'm not uh, melting these chip sockets too badly. I know they're somewhat heat tolerant, but you know, I'd be a little ham fisted with the heat. Logitech or just doesn't want to keep in focus. Likes to really get into like a good uh, throbby, bouncing focus. I guess if I got serious about streaming, I would get better equipment. But I cobbled all this together just from crap I had laying around the house. Seems to be working all right. All right, well, that's a few chip headers done. Now I'm moving on to some bigger ones. Maybe I'll turn this around. I can get a better... Oop, they don't knock the camera over. I can get a better view on this stuff. Yeah, that, that camera is a pain. Trying not to move things around too drastically over here, but yeah, you can kind of see what's going on. Is that focused? Yeah, okay, that overhead camera's focused now. Alrighty, back to this camera. It's upside down now, but that's okay. I need to get something better than this um, weird little helping hand setup I got. I've seen some um, circuit board vices that might work better for this. Probably be done with this project just in time to like order one. Kung Fu had some pretty chill music for, uh, you know, Kung Fu game. I 
guess when I'm done with this board, I'm take my meter to it and make sure I got all the good connections made. It might be overkill. Kind of annoying that the uh, board looks upside down in the camera, but that's okay. Just a bunch of soldering. That's what this stream's about right now. Soldering and uh, me quietly hoping this hummingbird over my head goes away. Like literal hummingbird in the rafters of my workshop that I hope finds the door out. Well, guy's been in here about an hour so far. I know those guys need to eat basically all day, so I'm hoping he finds his way out. I got a hummingbird feeder set up away from me at the other side of the room near an open door. Hoping that me just hanging out here and that feeder hanging out over there is a good hint. on uh, how to GTFO. We'll see. I know hummingbirds aren't dumb, but they're also not known for being geniuses. going pretty well now. I think I'm getting into a groove with the soldering. Actually done with this board. Let's see. And look at this thing. Uh, it's, uh, that's right. And uh, there you go. That's good enough for you. Let's kind of check this thing out. I'm gonna look at this video later and see what I missed. Give it a good scrub with a toothbrush and some uh, isopropyl alcohol later. But I think this board is done. So, with this board done, I'm going to move on to the next one. These are all the boards I've got yet to do. Um, I don't remember if I soldered this one in fully. Yeah, I think I soldered. Yeah, this one's all soldered up. But this one's done too. So that's the CPU board and the RAM ROM board done. Um, what would be my next board? I think I told myself that 
The Wi-Fi modem is optional for now. Compact flash storage. That seems like a must, because that's what the OS is going to upload from, or load from. Um, I got a dual serial board. I think the serial board is important, because that's going to be um, probably my first attempt at input-output out of this thing, so I'll get up to a terminal. Um, yeah, you're looking at the uh, zoomed-in view, that's not helping. Yeah, so I got a few boards here that I think I'm going to deprioritize. Got a dual clock and reset board. Another board or two over here. And then, oh yeah. Got a real time clock module. Which I haven't really dug into yet. So this has a, uh, a battery. Oh, I see. So that battery that I've been using to uh, that battery I've been using to test LEDs is probably best used with the uh, with this clock module. It's got a battery holder. Well, I'll get to this board at some point. I don't think I need this board right away. Because what I'd like to do is get this to a point where I can boot it up. With the, the least amount of hardware. And I think that's going to be storage, RAM ROM, CPU, clock board, I.O. board. Alright, well, let's start on the serial board then, I guess. Use us to pick something. Make sure I haven't left anything in the um, aggregate. Oh, I have left something in the bag. Make sure we don't lose that. It looks like it's a clock. I'm guessing. Make sure we don't lose that. Alright, actually, I don't know what that device is. You know what? I should probably look up what the DSM302 um, clockboard does. I ordered it, I should know what it does. Let's see, this is the best time. That's the kit I got. That's a back plane. Looking for. These are the base kits. I want to find the page that. What? No, that's not my one at all. I want to find details on that board. That's going to come as an expansion module. Yeah, this is the board. Okay, yeah, 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 that's what that little silver thingy goes. Silver thingy goes right there. That will be the... Crystal, I'm guessing. Yes. Ah, looks like the stream's dropping frames a little bit. Because this computer's a pile of garbage. That's okay, we're managing. Alright, well let's get back to the... some other boards here. 
Yeah, okay, this uh, sounds like this real-time clock board is going to be fun to play with, but not what I need for initial boot up. <sighs> Other boards we got. Yeah, I have a few of these accessories. But... Yep. Just kind of trying to find more pages about the boards I've actually got with this thing. Yeah, because when I'm like, okay, so these look like the essentials: RAM, ROM, CPU, serial clock. So I think those are the ones I'm gonna prioritize. I got. Um, So that means I've got two or four boards done before a successful boot up, or before a successful boot up. I got um, got the back plane soldered up. I got the Z80 CPU board soldered up. I got the RAM ROM board soldered up. So yeah, let's move on to the serial and then the dual clock. Okay, so I'm gonna do the serial board next. Let's grab that. And uh, I guess I'll see how I can stabilize it here in my uh, helping hands. Let's see more about that board. So here, you little hummingbird friend, you need to get out. Go through the way you came in. Alright, this board doesn't look too bad to assemble. I'm gonna have to prepare a header for it. Which is interesting, the way we, uh, the way we prepare headers for this thing. I think I got it open in a tab still. Which one is my, uh... Got the sharing? Yeah. Preparing headers. Well, each of these boards have, um... Headers that connect to the back plane. You have to, and they just come as like dual row pins. But you got to pull out some of the pins with needle-nose pliers so that they match up with the pinout of the board and the back plate. So I'm gonna have to do that a bit. Because... Yeah, so you can see like a bunch of these are double row. Some of them are not. So, I'm gonna dig through my supplies here and uh, one of these headers that I need. I'm grabbing these things out of the box. I got some more goodies in here. This is where, like, right now, all the all the chips for the computer are still stashed safely away in this box in their anti-static bags. I'm not touching them until I'm done soldering everything. Well, until I'm done soldering these four boards. Okay. We're looking at the serial module. Looking at how to put that together. Need some chip headers. That's what I need. Now that I'm looking at this, I'm not sure my... Uh, Helping hands are going to be so much of a so much of a help. I think I'm also brushing my mic. So I'm move that. if that's going to work any better, but we'll see. As long as I'm not, like, chinning it all the time. So 
So what I'm doing right now is I'm looking through my pin head or for my uh, chip headers. I'm trying to find the right ones for this board. That's one. I think this one. Yeah, this is one. Need a slightly longer one. This one. Yeah, that looks correct. Um, and I'm gonna need to find the appropriate resistors and whatnot. Hmm. Yeah, so this is all 1K resistor, so I guess wherever it says resistor, I'll be looking for a 1K resistor. I hope I'll show you what I'm looking at. Is that my window? Yeah. I'm just looking at the um, bill of materials here. I'm looking at what it all comes with. So it looks like I got a 16 pin, 14 pin, that's, uh, that socket, SIO2. What's an SIO2? I was just looking for all the parts that are in here. So it looks like we got a bunch of pin headers and selector, jumper thingy, what's it? I'll get to those in a minute. So I think I'm going to find my uh, my resistors. I've been bitten a few times now by trying to read the resistor codes. So I'm just going to test them all as I find them, just to, just to double check that I got what I think I got. By bitten, I think I mean I've just been dumb and... Uh, Forgotten how to read resistor codes. <laughs> yeah, you can't see what I'm doing over here. Might help if I give you a little more of a view of that. But yeah, just looking for resistors. So I got some of these marked as 1K. Yeah, I think these are 1Ks. And I'm marked as 1K. For whatever that's worth. They need to stare at my stomach the whole time. Let's see, what do we got here? I got a Marcus 1K. It's like gold, red, black, brown. Looks like that matches uh, what we're looking for. Oh, that's right. I also think I had a resistor code. Yeah, I had this open. So I'm looking at like... We've got a four band resistor. Gold. Red. Black. Brown. And that's a 1K resistor. Okay. So, I guess I don't really need to run, run it through the multimeter. I'd still do it anyways because I'm being paranoid. I like these probes I got that are like hooky bits. I could like hook the probes can hook directly onto the legs of the uh, resistor, which is nice. Yeah, it's close enough to 1K. 1K with a 5%. Um, it was more than 5%. I think it was like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. 1K ohms, 5%. It's disturbing that it's that, like there's that much of a threshold, but I guess it's because they're uh, physical devices. They are not, in fact, um, digital devices, so you're not going to get an exact value out of them. Oh, I still hear you, hummingbird friend. You need to leave the room. All right, well, let's start placing these. And then at some point, I'll flip the board over. So do I want to do these? Actually, you know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to start putting these in. I'm going to flip this board over and tack in these, uh, these chip headers. I know I got some painter's tape around here somewhere. I'm going to use that to keep those in. I guess I could use a finger, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, 
Wish I had a good way to chase this hummingbird out of my uh, workshop. It keeps coming back and forth over my head. And I just want to tell him there's a door below him. I can't open any windows up there because they're just kind of nailed into the walls. And I don't want to leave the workbench workshop with the critter in here. And no way to get out. I don't want to leave and lock up. Here, the poor guy is still chirping. Alright, well, I got those headers kind of taped in there. Feels like they're staying pretty solid. Let's tack these in here, at least in the corners. figure once I get the corner pins in, they're pretty uh, solid. And then I'll put the uh, other components in so I can do them all at once. Now the other problem is I keep hitting the painter's tape and uh, melting and burning the glue on a bit of exposed tape. It stinks. Plus I don't want it to catch on fire. I don't know how, how much of a danger that really is. Okay. We got those are kind of tacked in there. Yeah, those sockets feel pretty sound. Now I'm gonna stick the resistors in. Confused myself that badly yet. Well, the thing I like to do with these is get them into the board and then bend the pins against the board on the bottom. And that kind of helps to fix them in there and gives them a good. Uh, good contact with the PCB and just kind of keeps them in there. So when I flip it, uh, flip it over, they'll all stay kind of wedged in there. And then uh, once we solder those in there, we can use some angle clippers, clip their leads off. Nothing too special about this. I guess I need to find the, the other headers this thing wants. Something where it just keeps going back and forth along the electrical wire. 
between two of the workshop lights. I'm like, pal, just uh, go towards one of the exits. It's gonna exhaust his little self. That's not the greatest view, just looking straight at the back of my hand. I'm trying to find another good view that I can stick this camera at. Like, I guess that's interesting, but not that interesting. Yeah, I guess that's an, an interesting view. I'm also going to see my fingers. So I'm just placing some of these components and then bending their legs so that they uh, stay stuck to the board. some places to, to stick this camera. That's kind of better than nothing. So now I'm going to look for, I'm looking in this bin. I'm going to find, without spilling this all over the floor, there are, okay, I think I found them because I think they're actually color coordinated. I need I need this. I think this is gonna go I think that's one of my serial ports. That's another one of my little things. And that's gonna be one. Okay. It looks like there's some jumpers for these. That's another serial port. So I think those are my... Uh... Yeah, so I think these are my pen headers that I'm looking for. Sure I'm not missing anything. B clock, port A clock. Okay, so it looks like I got one more pin header to throw in here. And through the box. Do I already have it there? I got one, two. There's like three, two pin headers I gotta find. Helps that they're kind of color coordinated. Guess it's possible this one isn't. It's also possible it's not there at all. Read some more about this too. Let's see, this serial module is supplied with these computers with an updated ROM. It can be used as a replacement for, yeah. This is what I'm looking for. Um, yada yada yada. The speed of part A is derived from the main clock running the CPU. 
Port B can be clocked from the same clock via a jumper. Okay, oh, that's interesting. So I'm looking for... Documentation. Okay, so this is like documentation on programming the thing, which is not what I'm looking for right now. I'm still looking at assembly. So for the learns part, I'm finding assembly here is mainly centered around uh, the pictures because they're pretty simple boards. So if you look at the picture, you can pretty much see what you need to see to, to assemble it. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess the next thing I can start to do is really, uh, prepare this header. Howdy! Ah, buddy, buddy. Actually, I think I got a tool left inside the house. I'm gonna grab that real quick. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like the microphone's working now. Walked in the house, forgot the things in my pocket, and it disconnected from Wi-Fi. Oh well. Well, back to this. I'm looking at what parts I got left to do here. I can solder in... I guess maybe I'll wait to solder in all these pin headers. It's like... I know this has to go here. 
but it's kind of interfering with the uh, bent pins of the resistor, so I can get back to this. Try to make sure I organize all these parts and don't lose them. Like I've been very prone to dropping things directly on the floor. All right, so all the resistors are in there. I'm gonna start. Um, oh, that one doesn't have its pins bent. All right. I got plenty enough soldering to do between these uh, socket headers and these resistors, so let's get started on that. I should make sure my music is done. Next one, please. That'll work.
Yeah, it looks like my mic keeps cutting out, which is all right. I guess it's all right. I don't know how much you want to hear me versus the music anyways. I'm just talking about basic soldering is about all it is. I guess what I was saying is uh, trapping the socket pins in the middle with the iron on one side and the solder on the other. So I'm applying the solder to the pin and the pin is heated by the solder, or the soldering iron. I'm not putting the solder on the iron, putting the... Oh, uh, I just got visited by a bird, another bird. I hope another one doesn't get stuck in here. Had a blue jay come in the door. Anyway, heat the work, not the solder. Basic stuff. watching they could tell me everything I'm doing wrong. I wouldn't say I'm a super expert at soldering, but it seems to work. Using way too much solder too, I don't know. It's working though. I'm gonna turn this around so that maybe these pins closer to the little camera. And hopefully my fingers don't all get in the way. soldering these uh, chip headers in. Tack the corners first so that they're stable when I get to this stage of it. I think I'm doing all right. It would be neat if I got to a point if this thing was bootable in the next uh, day or so. I don't really have all the stuff. If it gets bootable, like I need to get uh, my USB serial interface out. But that'll be a good problem to have. Alright, well that's all the chips, chip headers, uh, sorry. I guess a next thing to do. Would be to get these things in here. So I need to get these in there. And you can't see anything. There we go. I need to get these things in here. On either side. I'm wondering what's the best way to do it, if painter's tape is the strategy here, or if I just hold it with my finger. And try not to get burnt. Yeah, no, this is annoying. I need to get this thing in here. Okay, I got that one in there. I guess a way to do this, which I've done before. Let's 
kind of stick some solder in one of these helping hands. And then bring the work to it. Yeah, why don't we do this? This is not the smartest thing in the world, but... I can tack these corners of this pin header. Well, not corners, because it's just left and right. I can tack these in while I'm holding them, and then I can put it back in the, uh... The helping hands. These are a little awkward. There we go. Another header here. Come on, focus. Thank you. Come on, you can do it. There we go. I got a few more headers to throw in here. <laughs> Thrilling camera work I got going on here. This one's a little rough because it's uh, two pins. You know, I've never played this Arkanoid game on uh, Commodore 64, but it's got one of the most amazing soundtracks of a C64 game. Those drums. Something else. There we go, we got one pin. Ow! Shoot! Not entirely on the board. There we go. Oh, this is fun. I probably should have left the uh, jumper on there. Shoot! You know, well, it's all right, but it's kind of annoying. I got uh, the pins are uneven now. That's a little one. It's not that bad. Fixed enough, anyways. Right. Trying to do this, not burn myself with a soldering iron. That's always. All right. 
Well, that's cool. We got a little jump around there. May I guess sometime, at some point check if that's got continuity. Oh yeah, the bottom pin header, that's the other thing I gotta work out. Uh, I gotta prepare that. That might be a good view of the thing. I don't know. Still futzing with this camera. I also have not played Outrun. From Commodore 64. You know it exists, and it's also got a great soundtrack. Eh, that's a good enough view, I guess. No, it's a terrible view. Oh, I'm messing around with the cameras. Is just like a closer overhead camera, but uh, I don't think I'm quite getting that to work. All right. I'm actually not entirely sure. There's a difference here. So the thing I'm looking at is the web page for this thing has a jumper on the, this port B clock. I know what that's basically for from the um, documentation, but I'm looking at these 5 volt things and this has a jumper on it. So is that... at least that jumper is in the same spot on this board where there's a label that says 5 volts. I don't know if I'm supposed to bridge those. It would help if I understood the circuit one. Okay, singed my finger a little bit, putting one of those last headers in. That's fun. The schematic would be helpful too. Little serial. Okay, it says 5 volt, 5 volt. For schematic, yeah, there is a schematic. I'm just curious what these 5 volt lines are. Jumper, jumper. Okay. I guess these jumpers connect the 5 volt line from serial headers. Okay, I, mean, I guess that makes some sense. Okay. Showing my ignorance at uh, how this board's meant to work. Just want to make sure I don't jumper anything that uh, is a mistake. But we definitely want to put that in there. So as part of this soldering, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick a jumper on this real quick. I found that I soldered this one and I got the pins like one a little longer than the other because I uh, 
didn't stick a jumper on it first, so now I'm hoping that stabilizes the pins a bit. Fussing with this frickin' camera. Okay, then it's just gonna fall over and knock crap off my workbench. That's fun too. Do -do -do -do. I haven't heard that hummingbird. Well, I'm hoping old buddy found his way out. I'll probably take a pause in a few minutes and check around the garage and see. Stick a little solder in here, and then I'll bring the work to the solder. I'm trying to solder in better. Feels pretty flat against the board, so let's do this. Two pin header there. I don't see another. Oh no, there's my other two in blue. I did find it. Okay. I'm pretty sure he gave me all the parts for this thing. It's all user error if I'm not finding them all. I guess you can't see me rummaging through the parts bins. Maybe those should be more uh, central so you can see this mess. Tell this is one of my very favorite Commodore 64 soundtracks. Yeah, right. I'm just getting this pin header flat against the board. So now you can watch me solder it. That's everything but the back plane vector ready. And this part is interesting because I need a pair, so obviously these don't exactly match. Focus, focus. Okay, focus. There we go. That's yeah, no, out of focus. Trying to get this uh, in an advantageous position. Yeah, good enough. Anyway, I'm trying to do now. I got this dual pen header. It's just a regular, like, what, I think, 40 pin. It's got to fit here. This doesn't accommodate all the pins. So i got to tear some up. And it looks like it's the first three. See what I mean? That's got to go up like this. So i got to take some pins out. This is because, I would imagine, 
it's easier and cheaper cheaper to supply this normal non-custom header and then I can just easily customize. Oh man. I've been playing uh Baldur's Gate lately. And it's been kind of making me want to play Full Radiance after I'm done with it. Just because it's another, like, computer RPG, another D&D type thing. I remember loading this game from Floppy and it would take forever. And the reward for waiting for the loading was this music starting up. And I'd usually be like, I'd start it loading and I'd be like in another part of my room or another part of the house listening for the music to start. Exciting day. Alright, so that's the first three upper pins remote. Focusing, yeah, first three upper pins. Now. friend is still in here. Thought I heard a rustling and, a, and an exit. Okay, anyway, this is what I'm trying to do. Yeah, do, 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 do. There's the board. I've gotten... First three upper pins are moved. Now I need to start from here. Start from moving some more. Correct. Yeah, I took the correct one. A little hard to see, but I take the upper pins out, which will uh, get me to the point where I can solder this header into this board. Man, it's been a couple hours now. I can't quite believe that Mr. Hummingbird has figured out the way up. He just has to fly down six feet and go out one of the doors. Oh, I see, it's not music anymore, they're actually playing the game. Well. That's better. Yeah, and so I'm doing, I'm just uh, moving these pins. It's slightly annoying because my needle-nose pliers apparently are magnetized. Very sticky. In the junk drawer. Gonna have these pins all over my workshop. Anyway, you can see what I'm doing. I'm removing these pins so that this fits. I 
And then I'll start soldering those in. And that'll do this board done. Bugger. Last one. There we go. So, this is what I did. I pulled pins out. Okay, focus, you bugger. Anyways, I pulled pins out. So that... Pulled pins out, so that... This fits in the board. So you can see there's like an extra pin over here. All the boards have that. I'm not exactly sure why. Might be for stabilization or something, I guess, but we'll see. Anyway, that header's in there. This probably deserves some painter's tape. So I can tack it in. Or I can just do that. I can just hold it while I tack in the corners, I guess. Let's uh, go back to this view. And I'm trying to keep this thing as perpendicular as I can to the board when I start soldering it in. Because the, the whole board is going to be perpendicular to the back plane. Can you see that little solder? Okay. So as I've been doing a few times now, when I do something like this, I want to position it with my fingers and try to get it just so. And then uh, bring the work to the solder. I don't have enough hands. And then once I get that stabilized, then I can just flip the whole thing upside down and. Uh, and solder it. A little more solder here. Still very wiggly wiggly. I'm trying to keep it perpendicular. looking pretty perpendicular still. It's looking pretty good. Alright. Now that that's there, I'm going to put this back in the, uh, the helping hands. finishing all these pins. Yeah, you can see that just fine. Updating my life on the hummingbird situation, i.e. the hummingbird is still here. I don't hear him chirping anymore. Not any way it works his way out. I mean, I guess I'm assuming it's a he. It might not be a he. I don't know that much about hummingbirds. I think they're neat, but I don't know that much about them. This pin header to solder. Yeah, 
it. And I got all these pins to solder. I feel like I've been starting to get a lot quicker with this. Hopefully these will go fast. use too much solder on these joints but enough to keep it intact enough to do the job I guess what I'm looking for is just a nice little Fill in the board on the PCB and form a bit of a volcano shape around the pin. How's that? I'm going to want to give these boards a nice um, scrub down some isopropyl when I'm all done. Get the sticky flux off. faster than the other boards. I do have a USB FTDI cable that I think is what is useful to talk to this thing with. I've got that for like various ESP8266 shenanigans and uh, Arduino garbage. All right. I think that's this board soldered up. That's everything on this board soldered. Nice. I think I'll, I might keep streaming until I get the next board done. We'll see how that goes. Uh, looks like I've been in streaming for about an hour and a half. I don't think it's been longer, but I guess it's only been an hour and a half. So, all right, let's, uh, let's get this board out of here and I'll uh, wave it in front of the camera real quick. We can do a quick little inspection. Looks like all the expected bits soldered up. It's going to be a uh, three chip sockets and the, uh, the bus board connection and the serial connections at the sides and we got some resistors and yada yada. Now what this is connecting to is this back plane. So you can see this board that's um, semi-dual row of pins, seats, and this backplane. So now that is 
three of four boards. I think I'm going to need for boot up. And I'm not really jamming these in there, but you can see. This computer is going to be an arrangement of little, little cards. This back plane. It's going to be really nice and colorful when it's done. So. Next board I'm gonna attack is this compact flash board. Ooh, there's some Jays fighting outside my work workshop. Yeah, so this is the next thing I'm gonna attack. Interestingly, this only has a single row of uh, headers, so I don't have to worry about that. It's also all 1k resistors. Okay, I feel like this board will go together fast. Let me look it up real quick, because it also looks like it takes some capacitors. I want to make sure I use the right capacitors for that. So, let's switch over to the browser. We were looking at the serial module. We want to look at... Um, look at peripherals. Expansion modules. An expansion module I'm currently looking at is a compact flash. Is it one of these? Compact flash module, there we go. This is the next thing we're gonna assemble. The materials for this will tell me we're looking at a 100 MF microfarad capacitor. Wait, that doesn't sound right. Is this the right board? Because this has, oh no, I'm thinking of, no, no, I'm thinking of this board. Got three capacitors. Those aren't labeled, are they? This board looks different than this one. This is calling for a 2K2 resistor instead of a 300R resistor. Yeah, there's a few differences here. That's interesting. Okay, but the... Maybe the schematic will help me. I just want to make sure I pick all the right parts. Uh -oh. hmm. Maybe the schematic will help. So we are looking at capacitors. I'm trying to figure out what capacitors to use. This is the bill of materials. Lists one under microfarad. But that might just be a typo. Like, I think I got plenty of these 100 microfarads left. What else am I confused about? The resistors say they should be 1K... Um, the resistor it's asking for up here is 2K2 rather than 300... Ohm. I'm wondering if that's just because of the different size of LED. Showing my uh, unfortunate lack of electronics recollection. Well. 
I guess what could happen is I'd burn out the uh, LED. Hopefully it doesn't kill anything else on the board. Alright. Well, let's get some resistors in here. The cool thing about this board is this one, the, the version I got is pink. Go along with the rainbow theme of the whole machine. Um, I'm pretty sure these are 1K resistors, right? We got um, brown, black, red, gold, 1K. Yeah, brown, black, red, gold, 1K. Right. We're going to get four of these resistors into the board then. We'll get the resistors in, and we'll um, get the capacitors in. And we got chip headers. We got pin headers. Pretty sure that LED I put in there earlier is the right polarity orientation. Pretty sure. I uh, maybe I should double check that, but I put that in there earlier because I had spent a little time. There's a package of LEDs that came with this kit, and they're all different colors, coordinated with the board. Which, also, that would explain the change in resistor, because it's not a green LED, it's a pink LED. I didn't even know they could do pink LEDs. some 100 amphere capacitors. You know there's a trick to get them off of this, off of these, uh, all the tear, these strips of tape, but I've never quite found it. Trying to do it without, like, you know, wrecking the component. I didn't jank the legs all up. Well, here we go. Get that in there. Also trips me up sometimes to remember that these little capacitors don't have a polarity. I read why that is sometimes, but I forget though. Yeah, yeah. It's inconvenient to show what I'm doing here when I got this like close to my stomach. There we go. I'm just threading these capacitors in. Trying to make sure their legs are relatively free of glue from the tape. Maybe I'll show you a little more what I'm doing. Just kind of threading these on there, and then uh, I'm gonna flip this over. Actually, you know what I can do too. I got all those all those in. Maybe I can um, stick the chip headers in. 
And then, uh... Get those all in place. What are these? These are, um... Oh, you know what? I don't know if I, uh... Well, it's too late now, but... I wonder if I... Got the, uh... Hmm. I might have put the uh, chip sockets in backwards on that last board I did. Oh well. I'm trying to match up the notch with the bolt with the notch on the board, which I may not have done on that last board. It's unfortunate because then that means I'll need to watch myself when I put the actual chips in the sockets. I don't think I got the right sockets for this board. Oh yeah, and then there's that 2K2 resistor. Let's try to put that on there. These chip headers, I can probably tack those down with uh, painter's tape. Alright. This part's been... I think I've got a 2K2 resistor in there somewhere. 1K... I needed these out at one point to be sure what they all were. I guess the question is... That's interesting. So I guess this um, this makes sense. So this LED is essentially the same as a bunch of these, and then these are all 2K2. So that makes sense, I guess. Yeah. So these are all interestingly bright colored LEDs, and then so is this one. I got a whole bunch of these resistors, which I measured at 2100 ohms, but so we're talking about tolerance. Yeah. You know where else I can get a picture of this? Just double, triple, quadruple checking what I'm doing here. Um, You were just looking at the pro pride. Just trying to find exactly what to put in there. And that digital I.O. board is right up front, so... Oh, that's a bad image. Well, look at that image. Well, open that image. Yeah, okay. This is, this, is, this is what I'm trying to cheat. This right here. You're not watching me on the uh, browser. This right here. These are marked as 2K2, and these are the resistor bands. And... The ones... that I measured... These are the same bands. So, yeah. The Voyager Discovery. And then again, I guess I can look at um, this. So this is a four band resistor and it's gold, red, red, red. Okay, 2K2, 5% tolerance. Yeah, so I think that's the thing that confuses me is tolerance on resistor. So I'll measure it on the, the multimeter. And I'm expecting literally 2200. And that's not what the multimeter meter tells me. And so I get confused. But I can, uh, I can meter it out again and show you what I'm talking about. So 
So yeah, so these are the resistors that I marked as 2K2. We got my little probes on there. Oh, I guess it's pretty close to 2.2. To, to so, tolerance. Alright, all of that was a long-winded way to say I found the right resistor or R5 here on this board. And I'll stick her in there. And there's a couple squirrels back outside my door. Get that resistor in there. Trying to make sure it's as flat to the board as possible. There we go. Okay. So. I'm trying to think if I could use some painter's tape here to keep these sockets in. Or if I need to just hold them with my thumb. Because I want them to be flush to the board. That's probably not a good idea. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do my stupid trick of using my helping hand to supply the solder. Oh, well, that's a few times already. So here's the dumb trick. I hold the socket in with my finger, and then I tack pins in. There we go. That's a more comfortable grip. I'm just kind of tacking end pins in. trying to figure out exactly the geometry of working in this space. There we go. Entirely sure. But this row of pins and the row of holes under the socket does. I think it mentioned something about it in the documentation. I hope I didn't need to like solder something in there already. Let's 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 forget too much further. Let's look at some more documentation about this board. Yeah, I'm talking about these pins here. <sighs> Compact V2, yada 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 yada, the enhanced circuit, yada yada. This is what I'm talking about. Okay. It is now easier to select a different address for the module to sit on. In normal use, it will appear on X10. 99% of users can stop reading here as there's nothing you need to do. However, if adding a second card, you will need to put it on a different address. Okay. There's a track on the underside. Okay. Track on the underside. And a jumper wire. Alright, 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 alright. So I can basically ignore that. This is just, if I get a second one of these cards, you need to change the drive address. It's like back when you'd have to do crap like that on a uh, 1541 floppy drive. Alright, well back to this. And there go my parts on the floor. As I fumble the board. 
I'm going to make sure I don't step on the parts that I have not dropped. It's not that it bounce off my leg, it's one of the chip sides. Of which I do not have spares. I guess I'm lucky this is the first time this stream that I've dropped anything. Where'd you go, little bugger? There you are. Okay. Found the part. Show you the most exciting camera view while I'm doing it. Okay, so I just dropped the board, which then caused one of the sockets to fly off. Alright, so again, what I'm doing, I'm gonna stabilize these with my fingers. And then Bring the solder down to the part. Or bring the part up to the solder. This will all go a lot faster once I've got all these parts stabilized. There we go. I think I got all those tacked in there. Nice thing is at least I don't have to um, solder in the actual compact flash socket. Well, hello, Mr. Skipfried. Welcome to Lurky Lurk. Hopefully I uh, didn't miss you entirely since I've had my glasses down and uh, ignoring chat. Yeah, so I think that's all the parts. I'm thinking, oh, except for the, the header here. Yeah, I've been uh, severely ne neglecting chat. Alright, so the next part is just getting this header in here, and if I can tack that into place and I got all the parts I need. Started on this thing. Alright. And again, I'm doing this stupid trick of hacking in the corners and let the helping hand hold the solder. You'll do a middle pin too. I'm trying to keep it fairly perpendicular, which I think I did an alright job doing. Do do do. Get in there, bugger. There we go. Okay. Now I can get this back into the helping hands. And I can hold this up. I think that's all the parts. Looks like we got um, the chip headers, the chip sockets, resistors, capacitors, 
You got the bus back plane pins in there, right? This sounds quite a bit like uh, Star Wars, and I'm sure that wasn't a mistake. Pretty stable in the helping hands. Started on those. I'm gonna do some of these long legged things for a second, clip them off, and get them out of my way. I'm goopy from the flux, but that's okay, we can handle that later. If Clear these pins out of here. Still pretty visible from that camera. Yeah, so I'm just kind of going after all these long-legged buggers, so uh, the board's a little cleaner when I get down to the socket pins. Hmm. I'm actually tempted to test that LED one more time before I solder it into place. Just to make sure I got the polarities right. His legs are all on the way now. They're all over the place. Okay. I went like... Oof. Oops. That capacitor's falling out. Oh no, I'm accidentally twisting the legs together. Oh my gusta. I just had the idea to bend them in different ways so they're out of the way of each other. What will the compact flash adapter plug into when I'm done? It is a bus card for... Doo -doo -doo. I guess I still have it open in a tab here. This is a kit computer. This is what it's going to look like when it's all done. So yeah, this is a kit computer that consists of a bunch of colored PCBs that go in perpendicularly into this bus backplane. And each of these cards have different functions. So this is essentially the, uh, the disk drive for the thing. So that's going to have the OS and everything on it. Got three other boards done for the CPU, RAM ROM, and then uh, digital I.O. Well, serial I.O. 
And then I got a bunch of other, I got like a half dozen other boards here for extra peripherals, but I'm hoping to get the first four boards done. And then I can boot the thing up. And see if I've um, entirely screwed it up. Those pins are all in there. Did I solder that to a... Oh, that's annoying. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. Let me just clean it up a little bit. But yeah, this thing is a, a Z80 kit computer that'll actually run CPM. And when I'm done with all the peripheral boards, it can even plug into a monitor. And, uh, I know just a little bit about CPM, but I'm pretty sure I can run, like, WordPerfect and Zork on it, which will be fun. And it can call up BBSs and whatnot. Well, BBSs via Telnet, via a Wi-Fi module that the thing has. A lot of soldering. All right, so before I go any further, because I'm paranoid about the polarity of this LED, I hope I don't destroy the LED with this. I got a little coin cell. This is negative. Yeah, so this side is negative. If I apply the coin cell like so. Okay, cool. Polarity's correct. And anyway, I really should have a, uh, a resistor in there, but uh, yeah, for a second it's all right. But it's neat, it's a pink LED for a pink board. I said a little bit ago, I didn't even know they could make pink as an LED color. But there we go, we got a pink LED. And I think with this, this board is done. Been streaming for about two hours, ten minutes. I didn't actually expect to be done with enough boards to boot this thing up, but it looks like I might be. Problem is, I don't have all the stuff I need to boot it up. Oh no, I'm not done. I still gotta solder all these pin headers. Or the, uh, chip sockets. Uh, but I need to get my laptop with, uh, USB serial... FTDI thingy lets it to actually talk to this thing. Here we go. That's not close enough. Get a little closer to the, the join here. There we go. Alright, now we got these uh, socket pins to solder. Oh, and we got all this. Oh, I'm not actually done with this board. It's gonna add on myself. Alright, well. There is... there she is. There we go. These can go pretty fast because I don't have to put too much heat into them. In fact, if I put too much heat into them, it starts to... Melt the socket on the other side, which is no bueno.
trying not to actually melt the helping hands here while I'm going through all this. I'm brushing the rubber over there. Nope, don't bridge. These are pretty widely spaced pins. I kind of have to really screw up to bridge them. All right, I guess I can move on to the backplane pins. Yeah, what would be really nice is to get to the point where I can stream the initial boot up of this machine. And then subsequent, subsequent streams would be like finishing another board. And showing what that board does. That'd be cool. Because right now it does nothing. I'm getting pretty close, I think, to having the uh, core of the computer done. So maybe next stream will be initial boot up. There's supposed to be a pin hanging out the side. Yeah, there's one extra pin on each of these boards. Um, and they might need to be trimmed off when I finally get to the end. I think it's just because, um, it's a slightly non-standard number of pins. versus whatever part this is. And I'll kind of wave this board around in front of the camera when I'm done. Make sure I got everything squared away, because I'm going to review the recording of this later. To see whatever screw-ups I made. Yeah, it's good to, to know what's going on with all the pins before I start soldering everything down, because this is this is not being desoldered ever. I'll just order a new one. I'll order a new kit if I screw it up that badly. But I think it's all right. That'd be sad, because then it wouldn't be a pink kit. Because this kit normally comes with a green PCB. There we go. I think that's the last pin. Alright, I got... All the headers, I got all the... Sockets, I look like it could use a little more solder. Alright, and then... Um, these don't get anything. Well, let's inspect it real quick. But, uh, those are some resistors there. We got all the. Come uh, on, focus you bugger. Alright, we got all those soldered in. Those look good. We got. Focus. All run focus. Run focus. Eh. Anyway, got the socket. Each one of those has a capacitor, each of those sockets look good. And then, um, this is what it's looking like from the front side. 
So again, just kind of documentation for when I check later and things aren't working. Hmm. Okay, well, so that is four boards done. I got, uh, I got this board. That's going to be storage. I got this board. That's going to be uh, serial I.O. I got this board, which is going to be RAM and ROM. <coughs> And then I got this board, which is going to be CPU. What else do I need? I got a bunch more that you can see on this view. No, you can't see on that because I moved the camera. So back there, I've got the other boards waiting to be built. And there's a lot more boards. But a bunch of these are optional for initial build up. I imagine I need a clock board. Like I'm imagining I would need... Oh, huh, that board's got a lot going on. Is that the next board I need? There are a few other neat boards here, like there's a, there's a different ROM board. Which I think I, uh, I don't actually necessarily need to boot up. I've got this, um, this is going to be a VGA terminal based on a Pi Pico, which is pretty cool. It's a, it's a computer more powerful, it's a peripheral with a computer more powerful than the computer into which it will plug. Um, going to be a Wi-Fi module. Which that's going to be pretty optional. There's a 64K RAM module, which I think is optional by virtue of also having a 512K RAM module. So I think this is going to be like something else to play around with. There's a real time clock board, which I think is pretty optional because I think that's just going to be date and time kind of thing. Not necessarily for initial boot up. There's a uh, digital I.O. board, which this will be cool for the blinking lights, but I'm going to want to have the serial terminal first, which I just soldered up. I guess that's the thing I could look at the documentation. It's got all these boards wired up, which are cool, but um, do I need the dual clock? module to boot up. We could just start in on it to be safe, but it's it's a pretty complex board. Yeah, this board has a lot going on with it. This is the dual clock board. This is a multi-purpose clock board. Yeah, I probably need to build this too. They basically have the Z kit. Yeah, okay, okay. I think we do need it. So here we got the RAM ROM, we got the CPU. Um, that's a serial board. I built an IO board. Yeah, so I think we do need to start it on the clock. Which I may or may not manage to do stream. Because I've been streaming for about ooh, 2 hours 22 minutes. It's about 20 after 5 here. I might stream a little bit longer before I call it a day. And then uh, I will check whether that hummingbird has gotten out of my workshop or not. Hope it has. It's been a while. So, we're going to start on this clock board. What do we need to do to build this clock bar? Until there's some sockets. Eh, let me pull up the picture. This is the thingy. So some of the best um, instructions for these things are just looking at 
the board layout, the photo of the board layout. So yeah, these are one of the more complex ones because it's going to have a bunch of different um, capacitors. It's got a diode. It's got some uh, resistors. I'm going to have to pay attention to the values of all. Some of the other boards were a little easier to put together because um, they would have like one resistor type throughout the whole thing. Also helps to see what's the bill of materials. Hmm, which one do I have? I think this is the enhanced bus version. Yeah, so this is all stuff I'm gonna have to pay attention to. Like, where does the one meg go? Where's the one k go? Where's the two fifty? All that fun stuff. So that's gonna be the first fun part: identifying all the parts. The nice thing with all this through-hole stuff and all the resistor bands clearly visible. Oh yeah, and it's even marked on the board itself. So this is really not that super difficult. Like, yeah, everything's marked on here. Like, even down to, um, you can see, like, what manifolds to use for the capacitors. It tells you what, uh, what to use here, diode to use, you know. Well, it doesn't say what diode to use, but I think I only have one diode in the box. So I'll just have to pay attention to, to polarity on there. Um, all right, let's start placing some parts. What is this? This one says... Which way is the camera? That says 47 microfarad. Um, the thing I have not yet memorized is polarity on these things. I think... Plus is positive. Let me Google that real quick. Because I think the stripe... No? Yeah, I think the stripe indicates negative. And the longer leg is positive. I'm going to Google that real quick, though. Be real dumb. Oh yeah, I think I got it right. But I'm going to Google it just to be sure. Electrolytic capacitor, polarity. I've been like triple checking everything because I don't want to screw this up. Um, yada yada yada, you know, the, the LED, chips, capacitors. Um, electrolytics, little tin cans, polarized. The negative pin of the cap is usually indicated by a dash marking and or colored strip along the can. They might also have a longer positive leg. Okay. So... I think I have this right. So... Positive is down. Negative is up. Stripe. Long leg. I think that means... The stripe goes towards the uh, negative side. Good, good, good. Um, all right, so that's a uh, so a microfarad. We're looking for a 22 microfarad, which is this 22 microfarad. Yep, yeah. and that says 22 microfarad, and this has stripe, and the stripe is. The stripe is towards the short leg. So again, I think that means... We do that. Let's get those two kind of leveled out. I'm just kind of bending these legs. Such that... So they're upright there. And I bent the legs so they're pretty, like, stuck in there. Now we're looking for some, uh, let's look for some resistors. We got a 10K, 1K, 1 meg, 2K2. That's a nice variety. I got a, I think I have one, one meg. 
So that should make it easy to uh, identify. I think this is my one mega. A meter, just to be sure. Well, I had been bitten by metering because um, I, I don't expect the tolerance. But yeah, that looks right. So there it is in the probes. There it is on the meter, one mega. Ohm. And since I'm triple checking everything in the world. Go back to our uh, resistor bands. Well, this is a four band resistor and it looks like gold, green, and black. Brown, one mega. Okay, yep. Triple checked. It's gonna take me forever if I do this with every part, but. I want to be able to laugh at myself later when things don't work. So our uh, one mega ohm goes here. Make sure I don't like then immediately put it in the wrong spot on the board. Then you can do it in the hole. There we go. Just trying to make sure that's in there as flush as I can get it. Just making sure all these legs are bent in a way that I can get to them. Okay. That resistor's in there. I'm looking for a 2K2. Oh, and I can also, I guess, double check on the um, image of this thing I pulled up. No, that's the serial enter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's right. I'm looking at uh, this board. Look at that. I'm just checking the, the markings. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm looking at, um, well, I, it's flipped on mine, but it's um, gold, green, black, brown, gold, green, black, brown. 2K2 is like uh, red, 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 gold. Red, 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 gold. Red, 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 gold. And again, that's um, 2K2, right? Yep. Get you and your board. Yeah, I'm just kind of flattening those so they stay attached. Next, we're looking for a 1K. I believe I got a hole. Each of those I marked as 1K. 1K is going to be uh, gold, red, black, brown. Gold, red, black, brown. Just want to make sure I got all these values correct. I'm hopefully going to get faster at this. As I get through more of the boards. If I did enough of this, I'd have the, uh, the color band memorized. 
But I don't do enough of this. Oops. This one's going in a bit crooked. Alright. Try that again. I'm going for 1k, yep. And I realized, uh, unlike the picture, I'm shoving all the gold bands to the bottom, and <laughs> in the picture they all go up. Eh, it's alright. They're not polarity-wise. They're not polarized. Polarity-wise? <sighs> yeah, this one bugs me. But it's like... Not quite straight in there. <sighs> alright. I'm guessing that all these resistor values are to, uh... Select a clock speed? I'm not super familiar with how a uh, clock works. I guess I will be learning. Alright, and so this one is going to be a 10k resistor. Um, and it's a uh, gold, red, black, brown. And I got gold, red, black, brown. I think I had metered these, and they came out to be uh, 9.8k, which... Is that my meter, or is that me? It's also the tolerance, right? I'm looking at the colors. I believe I got the right one. So I'm looking at uh, gold, red, black, brown. I got... Uh... Oh, focus, you bugger. Gold, red, black, brown. 10k. Safari Sagetti. I'm gonna find some. Um, I'm gonna find that clock. Oh, I think I found that clock. I believe that's the. So I need to find a couple 22 microfarads. I think I found the clock crystal. I know there's little labels on these things, but my meter can measure capacitance. So, come on, you can do it. Measure uh, on here at all. Maybe I just thought of the right range. Huh. It's hard to see the exact markings on these things. It says 22J. Cap label 22J is uh, 22 microfarad or picofarad. No, oh, not nanofarad, picofarad. Oh, 
pond. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Well, I got two of these. And there's two that are required for the board. And... Just to be sure... Yep. Uh, 22 Pika Fair and Ceramic Caps are what the thing says comes with. Alrighty then. Let me stick those in there. And then stick that clock crystal in there so I don't lose it. I gotta get it off this tape. I think that is annoying. Because I know there's gotta be a trick to get it off there. That I do not seem to uh, remember. Or have not gotten the knack of. Alright. Now, I guess another question is, does the clock have the polarity? Either way, it looks like, in this picture anyways, the serial it like is oriented like this. The letters toward the left. Like I think, I think that's the orientation I see in the picture. Letters towards the left of the board. Yeah. Letters towards the left of the board. So even if there is a polarity, which like, there might not be. There's not hints about that on the board itself. Alright. More tape. Well, that time I peeled the tape right off the, the cardboard. That's cool. Okay. Let me get this on the board. This is one of the less complex boards on here. It seems like. Or more, more complex boards. I was expecting the CPU board to be pretty complex, but it was not at all. Alright. I need somewhere to throw trash. My trash can's across the room. Oh, what else I got in here? I got some 2K2 resistors, which I had identified at one point before I set them back down. 2K2, okay. Uh, for the 2K2s, I'm looking at. That's going to be red, 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 gold. And we got red, 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 gold. I guess what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bend these like real close to the body so they fit flush on the board. I don't always manage to do it. But that's alright. I fuss with it too much, the legs break off, and uh, that's, that's no bueno either. those in there. We got some more capacitors. We got C5, C6, 6, C8. And we got uh, C7. Okay, so we got a capacitor there, capacitor there, capacitor there, capacitor there. Um, wonder what 
types those are. I thought I had the bill of materials open for this thing. Close some tabs. Blue clock, multi please. Multi speed kit. Um, 100 nanofarad? I'm guessing 100 nanofarad. The, uh,. Schematic would tell me for sure. I hope. Yeah, so we're looking for C7. That's one of them. That's a resistor. That's a resistor. That's a resistor. Oh, there we go. There we go. Where'd my mouse go? I think my computer's stuttering. piece of garbage. Let me get to the things I'm looking for. It's a 47. Where the heck is uh... Ooh. Yeah, I think I'm going to be wrapping up here soon. I'm looking for... Oh, they're all down here. Derp, derp, derp. Yep, there they all are. They're all 100 down here. Uh, just to be sure, I'm going to meter these again. Yeah, these are 100 nanofarad that I have in my hand. And um, the labeling. Let's say, uh, 105? Yeah. Well, I need four. I'm holding two. I'm gonna use these and then, uh, dig through the parts and find the others. So, 5, 6, 7, and 8 are all the same capacitor. <sighs> Just trying to get the tape off of these. I'm sure there's a clever way to do it that I'm just missing. I don't want to wreck the part. Oops. I don't want to bump the thingy. Alright, so, five. Six. Alright, now I got another package of these. These say 5k5. My hunch is these are not what I'm looking for. Could be wrong. Okay, well, that's weird. So the other one said 105. No, wait. Yeah. I think that said, like, 105, and this, uh, comes up as 95 nanofarad, which is close enough to 100. So 
I am very curious about the difference in these. So I'm checking the ones that I have on the board. Near Hunter Nana Farad. According to the meter, if I keep a solid connection. Uh, it works when it's sitting on my workbench. And again, I'm just trying to be real sensitive to like that I've got the right parts. Yeah, there it goes. Another Nana Farad. So the, the markings are slightly different, but... They appear to be the correct capacitors. guy in here. And then uh, this guy goes here. Oh, come on. Kind of hoping the more I do with this, the faster I'll get. Okay. What else we got that are not chip sockets? I think those are all the major components. We got these 100 nanofarad capacitors. We got these 22 picofarad capacitors. We got a uh, no, I think we got the right resistors. I double checked all those. I guess I can solder those. And then I can move on to the uh, chip sockets. I'm, uh, I'm 10 minutes shy of three hours streaming. So, what I may do is solder these components and then call it a stream. And then maybe, oh, that, that was like an unholy mess. Ah, uh, but then maybe next stream, I will find that I'm ready to put chips in and uh, boot the thing up. And then next stream, I'll be more prepared for that. All right, here goes soldering. This goes pretty quick. But this is one of the more complex boards. Makes sense, I guess, because it is the, like, clock that drives the whole thing.
My choice of wireless mic is frustrating. Anyway, as I've been saying, mostly for my own benefit. Clock barred. Everything looks all right. CPU board, I built that uh, yesterday. This is a RAM and ROM board. This is a dual serial board. Looks so I should probably show the backs of the boards too, I don't know. Dual serial. Compact flash. You know what I was thinking about? Yeah, compact flash in the back of it looks pretty good. The thing I was worried about. I'm looking at the chip sockets on this board. I think I put the chip sockets the wrong direction. So when I put the actual chips in, I might need to make sure that the notches go this way rather than following the socket. Not desoldering them now. Uh, this is the RAM ROM board. Looking pretty good. I'm just reviewing these again so I can look at both, the, both sides of them. Pretty good. So I think this set of boards will be enough to power it up. I kind of want to get... Well, no, I think those are the boards I need to power it up. The other boards are like more fun peripherals, so I can build those in future streams. So I got some... Um, well, I got like five more boards to build. I got this board, which is 64K RAM, which I think is pretty optional since I have the 512K RAM. I've got a digital I.O. board, which this will be fun for the blink of lights and switches. I've got a real-time clock. I got a, uh, this is gonna be a Wi-Fi module. And there's this pageable ROM, which I think is optional because I got the 512K ROM. Like it's like a different assemblage of the computer to play with. And then I got this one. This I might do last. This is the Pi Pico. Well, no, no, maybe I won't do it last. But this is going to be what actually I hook up to a monitor. Before then, I could use a serial terminal to talk to the thing. Alrighty then. 
So, I think that's going to do it for me. Thank you to anyone watching. Thank you to anyone who's been watching for a while. Hope you have enjoyed the chip tunes. And uh, I hope I uh, end up doing this again soon. Looks like I got a few more bugs to iron out with this whole setup, but uh, it's worked out pretty well. So, thanks for sticking around. I'm going to show you now my uh, farewell screen. Turns out I didn't assign a button to that scene. <laughs> well, that's another bug I'll have to figure out. See you next time.